Archie Reed? Yep. Archie Reed, Hi, Dave Archie. Vellante. Dave Vellante. Hey, Dave. Um, we're here with Archie Reed, who's a works for HP, but he's a cloud advisor. Um, basically, it's an in-house version of the cloud consultants, the cloud club we had uh, on VMworld, the cloud club that I was the co-founder of in San Francisco, a group of guys who get together who are in the industry. It's kind of a, not a meetup, it's a small group, kernel of, of smart, smart nodes, as we say, uh, to talk about cloud issues. So that was a very popular panel discussion we had at VMworld. And a lot of them were guys like Randy Bias at Cloud Scaling, um, Rich Miller, at Bernard Golden. These guys are in the trenches and they have sure. businesses that they're building. Sure. And they're very bullish. Um, so the question is, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being totally bullish, it's hot, where's cloud? And where's cloud reality? And if you can share some proof points. Didn't you just ask that question? Why? Well, you got to ask the same question. <laughs> you want a different answer? We're looking yeah. for I actually have a different answer. Yeah. I actually think we're in very early stages. And there's a lot of data points you can look to. There are a lot of the companies that we talk to uh, are looking to get into this some way, somehow. They're being asked by the users, by the you know, general employees, how do we get this going? But if you go out and look at some stats about how many websites are tagged as cloud providers versus general websites, 2% yeah. are tagged as cloud providers. In terms of the hosting. In terms of hosting, yeah. right? Uh, whether it be services, whether it be... Kind of a public cloud now, like public Rackspace, cloud. Amazon. Exactly. Yep. So in terms of what you see in the public arena, and, and it is growing, 2%. It's tiny. I actually just, so we're very early. Yeah, ways yeah. to go. Well, if that's 2%, private cloud right. is negative 2%. <laughs> well, not necessarily, because it depends how you define private cloud. Now, you will see that HP has traditionally not pushed cloud as a, a way forward, right? We, we talk yeah, about yeah. it, it's in the, in the industry, people are looking for us for answers, and we think, well, we're already doing it. We do IT right. We optimize things. We virtualize things. I mean, HP's, we are been, the, HP's been known. I mean, I, I used to work at HP back in the day, but, and they were the first real internet. I mean, they had DNS we, servers. They were one of the main nodes that had DNS servers sure. back in the day. And, and, and that's eat, part of the problem here food. is that people have the expectations. You were just talking about the consumerization of cloud. And, and indeed, that's what people are looking at. I, I can get things on an app store. I am used to signing up with my credit card, paying 50 yeah. bucks, and away we go. And when I come back into the office, I'm waiting three months for things to happen. Let's talk about security, since you're the security czar over there. Um, we just talked, Dave and I were just talking before you guys came on about mobile. And mobile is like the nirvana. Oh, iPad, iPhone. But you know, you got Android growing like crazy. Jailbreaking or rooting, mm -hmm. big issue. Blackberries don't have that problem. So security at the edge is a big topic. Sure. So we want to drill on that. The other thing we want to talk about is, is another point where Dave and I were just talking about, about cloud service providers. And the question is on that, Will cloud service providers have better security than enterprises? Will they become a SLA security model? Mm -hmm. So what's your angle on that? End user okay. security at the edge, which is device centric, and then cloud security. So that could yeah, be a whole 30 I, I minutes, one I of guess. The, you think cloud is nebulous. I have this title of chief technologist for cloud security. <laughs> I, I, I've got a double nebulous title, <laughs> right? Because security is so broad, cloud so broad, what do we really want to do? So I spend yeah. a lot of time working out which part of the cloud do you people want to talk about? And then what specific security concerns do we need yeah. to address? So you sort of raise uh, mobile security as one example. The endpoint devices, yeah, you've got to protect that end, but you've got to go from end to end when you consider the security aspects. When you think about the cloud provider themselves, and you've automatically gone to a public cloud example there, right? Yeah. Do you trust them? So we do a number of things. We already have a methodology that we use uh, information Security Service Management. Yeah. It's based on ISO 27K, Cloud Security Alliance, INISA, and a number of other security models that help people assess what do they need versus what are providers going to give them. That works whether you're doing a public cloud, private cloud, community cloud, something in between, or a hybrid of any of those. Is mobile advanced, I mean, advancing to the point of being viable? I guess that might be another question. I, uh, I would say if we want to focus specifically on the mobile side, absolutely. And it's this essential characterization of being able to get to whatever service you need through whatever device is going to give you the capabilities that you need to access that service. So security is like one of the evil twins of the cloud, the other one being management, I, I often say. And, and um, But my question is, ultimately, will cloud security be better? And how long will that take? So that, that was sort of in line with the question you asked. And the answer is, depends. Uh, it depends on the organization that wants to use the service. And the example would be, if you are a, uh, a one to 100 person company, 
are you going to have the security people on staff to deal with 24 by 7 consolidated attacks against your email, your hosted service, uh, sorry, your yeah. web service, all those sort of things. Most companies would say so no. The, so the answer yeah. is, for small companies, there's a, a very good case to be made that says, in some services, you can get better security by going to a third party because Google do stuff up, because Rackspace do stuff up, because HP does stuff up and has 24 by 7 security experts monitoring, dealing with the issues that are coming at them. So when you get to a large company, the answer is maybe. And then you're into the real discussion, which is I've got a risk analysis I need to do, cost benefits analysis yeah. I need to do. That slows it all down. It does slow it down, but the point is it's to be get, done. It's got to get done. It's right. got to get done. Yeah. Right? And there are some companies, you spoke before about people going out and just buying stuff on the credit card. Shadow IT is a major issue for the IT departments of today. They've got to change. Explain that shadow IT concept for the folks out there. So the shadow IT is essentially, uh, we've had it in cycles. Uh, over time, there are, like, consider a graphics design department 10 years ago, right? They're told by IT that we use PCs from uh, HP, that's it. And they say, well, our design software runs on Macs. So we've, we're just going to go buy those. You can give us the PCs, but we need Macs. And then you see people uh, who are going out and designing systems based on Excel or Microsoft Access or some little database. And suddenly you've got a mission critical service running inside your business that is not supported by IT. Now you've got these things that you can get for 50 bucks a month outside the company and people aren't even considering the security aspects. The, uh, the idea that I'm putting data out into the cloud that could <laughs> compromise the company, be it IP, yeah. be it customer data, employee data, I just see something that I need to do my job and internal IT is not giving it yeah. to me so as what, quickly as I expect. So what advice? This is, the, this, is, this is the dark cloud conversation. We've, yeah, been, right. you know, we've been talking about Silicon and Wikibon and we're doing some research around this. We haven't published anything yet about it, but the notion is we're calling it the dark cloud. There is a dark side. It's, it's all, it's classic anything, the underbelly of, right. of the web. I mean, what is sure. your opinion? And we talk uh, with Well, RSA. I can put in a, a personal plug. I have a book coming out today that's called Silver Clouds, Dark Linings. Yeah, uh, that's great. So Michael, I don't categorize Michael Mark, clouds, Michael and Mark are going to love, love this I, book. I, I don't categorize it as a, yeah. a dark cloud. Where are you so located, I, locally or? Yeah, I'm, here, okay, I'm in good. the Bay Area. We'll follow up on that. Now, sure. I, I think that the opportunity is there if you do it right. I think there are dark linings, book shall we say. Today. We're like Notre Dame here. We're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, guys, throwing these guys <laughs> questions. He's you. got a book announcing. Yeah. So buy the book, Silver the Linings. Way. Dark, silver clouds, silver clouds, silver clouds dark, linings. dark linings. That's great. Cloud is going to be big, right? We agree with that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That there are things you need to be wary of, yeah, and that's yeah. the premise of the book. But the point here is, if you understand what your risks are, if you understand what's going on, good. You can do an analysis to see whether you're going to get the right things from the cloud. Your average business person is obsessed with getting their job done more efficiently. They want to go home early. Whatever it may be that drives them. Maybe they're just obsessed about getting the right thing done for the company, but they don't have awareness of the legal issues, the security yeah. issues, yeah. The, the implications of what they're doing. So that's what they yeah. need IT to deal with. So a hypothetical question, I'm a, a CEO of a yep. mid-sized company. Yep. Um, I've never really felt like I got IT right. I'm spending a lot of money there, it's critical to my business, but right. I, I just haven't been able to either keep the people, attract the people. I want to outsource as much as I possibly can, but I'm nervous. Sure. What advice would you give that individual? So first off, your IT department, what you have of it, needs to be in the mindset that they're going to be a broker for you. They're going to find the right service at the right cost that delivers the business value with minimal risk. So if your IT department is coming to you and saying, no, we can't do cloud, you're either a defense contractor <laughs> or they're getting it wrong. Right? That there are certain industries, certain things that you just can't put into cloud maybe a legal group, but in general, there are options to say, we need to get our services in the right way. So if your IT department is saying, no way, no how, that's a warning sign. Get the right people in place who are going to deal as a broker for you to get the best deal. Uh, in terms of CEO, you need to understand all the value that your data has. And this is where a lot of companies fall down, and a lot of what we do is assess the data that they're thinking about putting into the cloud. Now, we just did a work with uh, a bank that wanted to do a whole marketing campaign. They wanted to use tools out of salesforce.com and we did analysis of what the cost benefit 
risk analysis was against putting some of that data into salesforce.com for a certain period of time to do this campaign. And they decided to take that risk and it worked out, at least as far as we know. That is something that a number of other companies won't necessarily take on. Let's but take this was a bank that did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 would agree. I would totally agree with you. I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, the question I want to follow up on Dave's point about CIO is, let me rephrase the question a little bit differently. Sure. I'm, the, I'm the CIO, I say, hey guys, I'm hip, we're going cloud, we have to rethink our business for all the reasons you yep. talked about. And, and the IT goes, boss, we're all over it. No problem. But really, the CIO leaves the room, they turn their hat around, He's crazy, screw him, there's no way, we're dead yeah, if we yeah. go to the cloud. We just so, bought so another six months. Constructive so, uh, obstructionism Yeah, sort of so thing? Constru <laughs> good point. That, but that's going on, we heard that at VMworld, sure. loud and clear. How do you coach the CIO? What benchmarks or what things can you put in place to kind of uncover the rogue or the uh, insubordination, if you will, of, the, of the IT? Because they will ultimately reject, like, yeah, the, mainframe, in their like the mainframe guys did in the old days. Yeah, like, sure. you know, they're not going to go, they don't want to go there. Th there are very simple metrics that you go against, right? Are we getting value for money? Are we improving our situation? Yeah. Is the business happy with what we're delivering to them and are we doing it fast enough? The message that we're hearing and from the quote, because we're doing some report on this, the CIOs go back to their teams and their IT teams give them credible reasons why the cloud sucks. Sure. Boss, well, we, we're investigating. Yeah. We're investigating, there's too much risk. Too much risk. You'll kill the business, data, it's your job, right? your you reputation. Fired. So here's, here's one of the fundamental things that we advise people to do when they're thinking about cloud, and it is not just an IT decision, right? This is, even if you have your security expert, you know, myself in the room, and I'm very pragmatic. I, I, I wear my sunglasses, I've just realized, because mm -hmm. I'm pretty optimistic. The sun will come out, yeah. right? <laughs> the point here is, if IT alone are giving you those reasons, then you've got a problem. You need to involve more than just IT in the decision. The business needs to be involved and say whether they're prepared to accept the risk. You need to have a reasonable explanation of what it is that you're offering them in turn for that risk. They may say, for the cost, we're willing to take that. Does the CEO sign off on that? Maybe it needs to go that high because we're dealing with uh, important IP, customer data, whatever it may be. But at some point, it's not just IT's decision. So we're hearing a lot of good advice. Um, really understand the risk, share the risk, share the gain, understand the roles. Yep. Right. It's talking about a changing role from one of IT as implementer and integrator to one of IT as broker of services. Yes. And then understand the data and the application portfolio and what fits in the cloud. Right. Pretty so, practical. Uh, a couple yeah. of other points. We've gone through a whole bunch of cycles. Uh, if we just look at uh, um, SOA, right? A lot of people got disillusioned with that. It didn't deliver on the promise. It didn't give yeah. them what they thought that was going to do. A little early. But the model. But that's, that's cloud, basically. That's what's going on now. It's part way. of it. The, the approach is, is sound. Mm. If we put things as services, we can abstract things and whatever happens behind yeah. the scene, okay. Reuse them, right. But yeah. a lot of people got disillusioned with that and they think cloud is the same. Or they've seen the security issues. And grid on the networking side too. Same, we've seen that same kind of thing. Right, so all these things have gone in cycles. And you need to get past that and say, uh, okay, we're now evolving to something that's a little bit different, but the value is incredible. Yeah, yeah. The orders of magnitude. I think you're correct on that. The, the web too. I mean, yeah. the dot com bubble burst, but the, all the promise of the web happened. You right. know, just a little bit later. Now, it may not just be a cost benefit. Right? All your other competitors are out there looking at the same thing, going, can we get to market quicker? Can we do things in a better way? Can we optimize this? And if you're not looking at that, not only assessing what's going on inside the organization, but the threat landscape from your competitors and the expectation of your partners and customers, this is classic stuff for business, right? Nothing right. new here. We're here at the Cube, inside the Cube when we're expecting all the knowledge from the marketplace. Um, final question for you, for me, and then Dave has a final question, we'd be happy to talk about that. Um, the future. We're early stages, top of the first inning, bottom of the first I inning, whichever so. inning you want to go with. Five years out, what's your vision of the future? From not just HP, but your, your perspective, personal perspective, what's going to happen in five years? Is IT all going to be in the cloud, just, or whatever? I mean, what is your view of the world? No, I don't think that's the case. Going back to the model that we use about assessing the value of the data, the value of the workload that you want to put out there, there are some things that a lot of companies will not consider putting out there. Uh, there have been statements that uh, we're not going to put our customer data out there, we're not going to put our employee data out there, whereas other companies will. 
I think we're going to end up with a marketplace where it's bifurcated between all of those things, one spectrum to another. Okay. But I also see a huge rise in what I would call community clouds. And community clouds are essentially there is a, uh, a service or set of services being offered in the cloud, public cloud generally, that meets the criteria, the risk analysis, the requirements that a certain industry or group has. And we've actually delivered one of these already for the Department of Defense here in the US. A vertical cloud almost, right? A, a vertical cloud, if you want to call it. And uh, uh, if you go to the NIST definition, they have public, private, community, and hybrid. Hybrid, right. right? So in this case, the community cloud essentially says, here's a group of like-minded uh, companies, yeah. you know, what, yeah, yeah. And, and they all have these requirements, and we're going to deliver this. In fact, you see it also with uh, Google Apps for Government. right? They had to do something different from their standard offering. Yeah, yeah. Their SAS 70 didn't cut the security qualification, and if anyone's looking at SAS 70, it doesn't. Uh, but they had to go off and get FISMA certification Right, federal information security management right. certification to offer that to the government. So they have now split their essential infrastructure, their uh, scale opportunity there, and said, this is a big enough market, we're going after it, and we're willing to do something different to get that market. So we're talking cloud. We're, see more. we're talking cloud security here with Archie Reed of HP. Archie, it was great to have you on the he's queue. An author now, as of yeah. today. Yeah, he's new book. book coming out uh, tomorrow, fourth right? Fourth book, but yeah. Fourth book. So he's going to get a little signature so signing going on here at the queue. It'd have to be an e, e signature. E signature, exactly. good. That's the way to do it. So we've it's got in the uh, silver it's in the cloud. clouds, dark lining. Silver clouds, dark lining. Archie uh, Reed. We'll read it.